Hey boys, what's up? This is Ragai Gaming here today, and today we are doing an oldie but a goodie tutorial. This is opening a door with a GUI, and today we are doing it so that it'll work if you have filtering enabled enabled on your place. And if you don't know what that is, I recommend looking it up on the wiki. Basically, filtering enabled is a way to make your games hack proof, or at least as close as you can get to it. Um, so to turn that on, all you do is go to workspace and in the properties there's a checkbox called filtering enabled and go ahead and check that. Now, <laughs> one thing about it is if you haven't noticed already, turning that on will break a lot of your scripts. And the reason be that is, is because it basically severs um, almost all client server communication. And uh, if that's confusing, don't worry about it. Um, hopefully this video will help you make more sense of that. Because really the only way to get to understand this concept is to use it. And so basically when it comes to Roblox, there are two different um, forces, I guess, at play here. There's the client and the server. The client is what you're playing on. So this is like your player, what you see, and everything else. The server is the game. So for example, let me just give a quick example here. If I start a server, here is the server right here so as you can see it's basically just the game playing and all the processes go on here like all the game code and everything well almost all of it and basically this just handles all the logic behind your game and all the stuff in workspace now a client would be like each individual player so this would be one client and this would be another client. And so on the client really is just your GUI and your way of interacting with the interface, while on the server is where all the interactions with the world come into place. It's a little more complicated and sometimes there are crossovers and it's not always the case, but basically that's what's going on. And so what filtering enabled does is it kind of severs the, co the connection between the scripts. So local scripts aren't really able to handle stuff in workspace anymore and server scripts aren't really able to mess with your GUIs or your um, more client-sided stuff, which there's a complete list on the wiki if you look up um, filtering enabled and remote functions and events and all that. And so basically that's what we're going to learn how to do today is kind of reestablish that connection. So we do this by using a, what are they called? Remote event or function. But in this case, we're going to be using a remote event. And so these are stored in the replicated storage because these get replicated to the client and they are already stored on the server, but they get replicated to the client. And basically this is like your telephone line between the client and server. Is anyone old enough to know what a telephone line is? <laughs> but these are basically like your ethernet cable between the client and the server. And so in order to get one, you just insert it um, just like you would anything else. So you just type in remote event. And as you can see, I've named mine more specifically to open closed door. Um, just so I know what it's doing, just in case I want multiple events to be fired simultaneously. And you know, I have a lot of communication going between back and forth between the server. Now, if I did not have it set up this way, what would happen is I could still manipulate stuff. So for example, like today, we're going to be learning how to open and close this door. I could still open and close this door from the client. So it would look like it worked. However, if I had it without this f um, remote event working in between, what would happen is when I was on my one player here, so I'm player one right now, I think, 
Yeah, when I would click the open door button, I would see it open just like normal. When I click close, it would close. The problem is player two over here and the everyone else playing wouldn't be able to see that. I can see it right now because I set it up good. But any changes made from a local script on a client will only take place on that client and not on the server. So other players will not be able to see you interacting with the world and so that's why you need that connection between the two and with all that now we can go ahead and jump into the script sorry i had to give such a detailed explanation it's just that this might be some people's first time for a lot of this and i want to make sure i'm thorough and don't worry if you don't get it there will be a lot more tutorials to come we will be going over a lot of this with different tutorials and stuff so what we're going to first look at is the script inside of the door that handles the opening and closing so inside of your door you're going to want to put a script and what this script does is it basically handles all the manipulations on the door so it handles the opening and the closing well I guess it would be the opening and the closing <laughs> so what you're first going to need to do is get the replicated service storage you don't have to put this in a variable it's just easier and then you're going to need to get your event and you can store that in a variable again you don't have to but it's just it makes more sense if you do and so what i'm doing i get the replicated service storage by using get service and then I get the event by finding the child open closed door or whatever you happen to name your event. And then I get the door, which is just the script's parent for convenience. Now I have to use a event here called on server event. And what this does is whenever the client fires to the server using this event, this is called. And so this function will be called. And we are passing in two parameters here, the player, which is always passed in when you fire an event from a client, and then anything else after that is whatever, like any kind of user-defined parameters. And so in this one, let me hop to a button now so this makes a little more sense. You can see here I do almost the same thing. I get the storage, I get the event, and then when the GUI is clicked using this event, so the script.parent.mouseButton1 down, this handles when the GUI is clicked, it fires the server and passes in a string that says open because this is the open button we're firing from. And similarly, in the closed door script, we pass in a string that says close. Now there are other ways to do this, but this is just the way that I wanted to do it and it makes sense to me and hopefully it makes sense to you. So this way we know what button is being pressed. So now when the server hears that it's being called from the client, it will perform these actions. And so what it does is it takes the player, which we actually don't do anything with, we just have to store it so that the ordering is all correct and everything. And so you say, if the button, if button, which is our variable here, is equal to open, which it will be if we press the open button, then we do all the good old stuff to make the door like partially invisible and make it so you can walk through it otherwise so in any other case which the only other case would be if the button is equal to false but it closes the door and it's really that simple so it doesn't add too much extra steps it is a little annoying that you have to use a script and a local script to handle all this when normally you could just use two local scripts but it does make your game hack proof in other instances as you'll see when we get to like especially um shop guis there, there it comes in really handy when you're doing shop guis and stuff of that nature where you're working with like player data um but yeah hopefully this made sense if not just subscribe and stay tuned and we'll go over this a lot 
as I redo old tutorials so that they work with filtering enabled and I really hope this helped and if it did um, if it didn't let me know down in the comments post any output errors they'll be in red text like this and they'll say like oh stack end or whatever but post any output errors you get so I can try to help you work through them um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day i hope this video is informative don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials and i will see you guys later goodbye